Let's go over some of the tools used in this video to install our wiring harness. Impact wrench or drill, T30, T45, and T50 bit sockets. Wire crimper, stripper, and cutter. Screwdriver, socket wrench, 10 millimeter and 14 millimeter sockets. Cutting pliers, needle nose pliers, pencil, zip ties, fork crimp connectors. Before we go any further, let's listen to that safety jingle. Doom, 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 doom. Before you walk upon your car, do these safety things before you start. Turn on the car, parking brake down, flip your switch to dome mode, and disconnect your battery. Hey, this is Paul from Streetwise Carts, and before we jump in, I just want to let you know that this video is part of our free street legalization mini course available at streetwisecarts.com. Signing up for this course also gives you our downloadable parts buying worksheet. This free mini course is the installation portion of our full street legalization course that goes over all the state paperwork and compliance issues that you need to be aware of when converting your golf cart to a street legal LSV. You can find a link to the free mini course along with a 10% off coupon for a full street legalization course right down below this video. All right, let's jump back in. The first thing to do is lay out your harness next to your cart and get an understanding for how the wires are going to run through your cart. If your harness came with PDF or instructions, just go through each plug and get familiar with how your accessories will connect. In our voltage reducer video, we removed the front seat, side skirts, floor mat, and dash, which gave us access to the cable channel, which goes from the batteries to the front of the cart. I'm also going to remove the cup holder, which comes off with three 10 millimeter nuts found underneath. If for some reason your cart does not have this channel underneath the floor mat, or it's not big enough for your harness, you'll need to use zip ties to route the harness underneath the cart. When routing under the cart, you can use a drill to make holes in the plastic underbody to fasten the harness with zip ties. Because there's very little access in the front of our batteries to route our wires, we're going to need to lift up the body of the cart. First, I'm removing the side bolts with a T45 socket bit. Then I'm removing the T50 bolts on the top. This gives me some access underneath, but I'm still being blocked by the charging port screws. So I'm using a T30 bit to unscrew the four screws behind the port. Lastly, I'm going to remove the cover for the solenoid and controller. Now I have room to pass these wires through. Next, I'm passing the front set of wires through the battery compartment underneath and then pushing them through to the main channel and up behind the cup holder into the dash. I'm pushing the wires all the way through until I hit the cable sticking out labeled brake switch. That portion gets pushed through into the area with the brake and gas pedal. I need to make sure the harness reaches the headlights well, so I'm pushing all the slack all the way up the channel. Now we're going to wire up our headlights and install the push-pull switch to turn them on. There's a hole behind the dash that I'm going to pass this through, so I'm pulling the switch off the harness to fit it through. Once it's through, I can plug it back in and get it installed in the dash. At this point, I'm going to disconnect the old wiring harness, which is attached directly to the battery. My cart has an on and off switch installed on it from the old harness that I'm going to have to remove. If your cart didn't have a hole for the push-pull switch, you'll need to drill one and it's typically a half inch drill bit. I'm removing the old switch and installing the new switch. Now I can move my dash out of the way and start hooking up the headlights. Because my side skirts are off, I can easily lift the front cowl to access the wires. Make sure you're plugging in the correct driver and passenger sides, otherwise your turn signals will be mixed up. Once the new harness is plugged into the headlights, I'm routing the cables through the retainer clips. These white wires you see with the bullet connectors are for high and low beams, which these headlights don't have, so I'm just going to leave them disconnected. Now I can start removing the old wiring harness all the way back to the battery compartment. Next, we'll hook up our tail lights. 
You can see in our old wiring harness the path of the shorter tail light wire back through the driver wheel well. Once the driver's tail light is connected, it can be tucked up into the wheel well. We'll zip tie this later to keep it secure. Now I can pull that old wire out and we just have to hook up our passenger tail lights. The passenger tail light gets routed on a rail that goes behind the front seat. We have to get access to this compartment, so we'll be unscrewing two T30 screws that are on the back of the cart. Once these screws are removed, we can open up this panel and we can get a good look at the path of the wires. The wires sit along a rail. Mine is held on with two zip ties which I need to remove. Once I've disconnected the old tail light, I can remove the old harness, replace it with the new one, and get the last tail light hooked up. I don't want this wire falling down and rubbing on the tire, so I'm going to put a zip tie through a hole that was already in the cart to, to hold it up. It's not shown, but I do the driver's side as well. I also secure the wires to the rail with the zip ties, and now I can close up this compartment. Now I can start putting the body back together. I'm going to leave the dash, cup holder, and floor disassembled because I still have more to connect in other videos. So at this point, I want to test out my headlights and taillights with the new wiring harness. These ring terminals that came on this wiring harness are too big for my fuse box that we're going to be hooking into. So what I'm going to need to do is cut these off and crimp on new ends that are going to be able to fit onto my fuse box so that I can test this all out. All right, so we got our new forks crimped on. We're going to hook it all up and see what happens. Now that we have our new forks crimped on, we can hook it up and test it out. I turn the key switch on and like magic, we have light. If your lights don't turn on in your test, make sure your batteries are connected, your key switch is on if it's wired to the inverter, and that you're getting power using a multimeter. I'm going to remove the harness from the power to continue hooking up our accessories in our next videos.